no. Once I snot, I can't stop snotting, so that's great. I have to stop eating dairy. Hi guys, what's up? It's me again. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how everything is going and how I'm feeling. Interestingly enough, um, the high of like not buying anything to prove to people that I don't need their opinions has worn off a little bit. I have probably said in the past, but my addiction to self-righteousness has um, was born and bred at a very young age and doing something on a platform and uh, in front of people for reasons of being an example um, it, it's very much imbued in me by the way that I was raised. So, um, that sort of martyrdom, self-righteousness, um, which can give you some type of like, I've noticed it can kind of give you like a little bit of a high. And especially if you're an addict like me, any type of high, um, I can get is what I'm going after. But it's uh, crazy to see how quickly it wears off. I also have discovered that my hair dryer broke. My hair dryer I've had since high school broke. Broken. So I had to buy a new one on Amazon and I bought safety pins for work um, because these tigers have to be caged. So I need a safety pin to safety all my button up shirts. Um, I got some safety pins for that reason. And in making those purchases, I found that I felt like I was, um, accomplishing a goal. There's a process You're, I'm on Amazon. So I'm looking through Amazon. I'm looking through items. I'm reading reviews. I'm trying, I'm going back to my old hair dryer that I love and seeing what it's called, what kind it is. I'm <laughs> it's just like there's a whole process. Then you pick the item, then you add it to your cart. And then after you've gone through this whole process and you've picked everything, you press order. And there was like this tingly feeling that came over me where I was like, yes, I did something. And I really, didn't I mean sure I did stuff in theory but I didn't really do anything in terms of like accomplishing my goals or pushing myself forward in my career it really was like a, a side endeavor that I felt really fulfilled about it made me kind of realize that most definitely my thought process of this whole shopping thing being a um i'm not gonna cry <laughs> this whole shopping thing definitely being a distraction towards me actually accomplishing things as far as um, milestones in my career is 100 percent accurate i'm sure that i'm gonna tap into a lot of other stuff uh this type of change is a lot harder than I ever imagined. Um, a lot of the feelings of loneliness, of not being accepted, of feeling like I'm not doing anything are coming to the surface. Um, and this is all, I gotta get myself together, but this is all stuff that's definitely um, from my childhood. So there is a lot of anger coming up too, and a lot of self-righteous anger, which of course I have to Sorry, I feel really vulnerable, but 
um, I have to look into and look at. And that's not fun. There's a point where you can only be so mad for so long. Um, and mostly how I express my anger is through crying because for me being angry <laughs> was not really acceptable or listened to. If I cried, then somebody might hear me. Um, so being angry over things that have happened in my past and being resentful and being rebellious can only serve me for so long and then it and then it doesn't ultimately you know i am an adult i'm in charge of my own actions and what you know there's a lot of relief in that that i have the power to change my behaviors, but um, there's also a lot of fear because now it's on me. Sure, some of my behaviors in the past have been developed because of situations that I've gone through and I've learned how to cope through them by doing some of these things those situations aren't happening anymore so the behaviors that i'm employing are now and i know what those behaviors are so now they're not i'm not a victim of my circumstances anymore so now i have to take responsibility and how much reluctance i actually have to taking responsibility to like opening up bills that I receive or actually looking at my finances is very interesting. I wish I had like more fun things to talk to you about. <laughs> um, it sounds very dismal. Uh, like I work at a retail shop, so it's interesting to see how there's a new release that comes out and we all try it on and everybody buys it and it's um, strange to not be a part of that group anymore it's strange I mean it's not strange it just is what it is how much I feed off of other people's um, approval of me and compliments and it all comes from not feeling good enough what this for me all comes down to is that my belief of not being good enough is what is coming to the surface the most. And it's interesting how beliefs be so strong and how hard they can fight to stay alive <laughs> essentially my therapist talks about how um, behaviors aren't self-sabotaging they're self-preserving and I know this belief of not being good enough has helped me um, not tap into a lot of pain and disappointment in my life um, and has kept me from confronting and making decisions about how I actually feel about myself. It's definitely a belief that was instilled in me by other people. Um, 
and it's not mine. <laughs> it's not mine anymore, at least. I'm not sure that it ever was mine. I have a very dumb story, but it's uh, one of my favorites about who I was when I was little. But um, I was a child model, very small child model, um, like small scale, like outlet mall model. And I had to get a comp card made. And part of getting a comp card made is they measure you. And um, they measured me and I was like 25, bust 25 to waist 25 hips <laughs> so I was just like a little tootsie roll all the way down and um I showed my mom what the measurements are and I told her mommy I'm perfect you know there's always been a part of me that thought I was enough so I'm I'm looking forward to um, discovering that person again. <laughs>